talking shit, yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club, dripping like I'm fresh paint. I can see through the facade like a What's neck. going on, fight fans? It's another great day when you love MMA. Welcome back to Mad Maddie Fight Talk. So UFC Fight Night just went down in San Diego. The main event was Dominic Cruz taking on Marlon Chito Vera in a bantamweight badass fight between the number five ranked Cheeto Vera versus the number eight ranked Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz is making somewhat of a resurgence in the later half of his career. He's trying to get himself back into title contention. And Cheeto Vera is one of those guys who's just been on a freaking run and showing that he has all the potential of being, an, being the next champion in the 135 division, or at least the next contender. Now, this fight just happened. It ended in the fourth round by a nasty head kick KO by way of Marlon Vera. Dude, Cheeto Vera is an animal, man. That guy sits back, he picks his punches, and he lands nasty shots. Dominic Cruz came out on fire. He started off with a head kick and a lot of blitz punch style combinations, and he was landing. He was doing some pretty good work. He was kind of hard to touch. But when Vera landed, he hurt Cruz bad. The first time he caught him was a nasty left hook and dropped uh, Cruz right away. Cruz bounced right back up, did his trademark style of just bobbing, weaving, throwing some overhands. If you guys have watched the UFC for a long time and you guys are familiar with Dominic Cruz, he has a very weird style of fighting. He's very awkward. He kind of leans, doesn't really block his face and uses a lot of head movement. It's effective when it works, but when he gets caught, he gets caught hands down and he got dropped multiple times by Vera before that head kick. I think the third round he got dropped as well with a straight stiff uh, left hand from Marlon Vera. And then Vera just caught him on one of those bob and weave type movements. Like, Dominic Cruz likes to get out of the way and then throw a haymaker, get out of the way, throw a haymaker, throw his jabs, then get out of the way. He dipped to his right and got caught with the left head kick. It, he potentially broke his nose on that kick as well. He went face down on the mat, blood started pouring, and Vera came in with the two finishing shots just to put the, the sweet icing on the cake. So Marlon Vera is definitely showing that he is a finisher and that he is not to be fucked with in that division. That division runs extremely deep. And we're talking about the bantamweight 135 division where Aljamain Sterling is currently the champ. Now, he is going to be taking on TJ Dillashaw later on in the year. Pewter Yan is actually ranked number one right now. But he has a fight with Sugar Sean O'Malley that is coming up. That's a very interesting fight as well. Because Marlon Vera is ranked way above him, and yet he's still going to take on number 13 O'Malley. I think Pewter Yan knows that it's a fight that could potentially favor him. He doesn't have to worry about the takedowns. He doesn't have to worry about too much jiu-jitsu. And he knows that he could potentially hurt O'Malley if he catches him. And now there's a flip side of that too. You're the number one contender right now. Literally ranked number one. And you have potential of getting knocked out by Sean O'Malley. So this could be dangerous for Yan. But regardless, those guys are booked up. I'll get into that in the future. Jose Aldo is number three. He's taking on number six, Marab. Uh, what's his name? Divozvili or something. I don't know how to say that guy's name. Marab. He's number six. Damn good fight that is going to be. I don't know how to say his name, but I can tell you one thing. That dude is a fucking hardcore fighter. He can eat a punch and he can, he can land a punch. So the 135 division is just completely stacked is what I'm trying to say. So where does Marlon Vera go from here? If I'm Cheeto Vera, I know that guys don't like to wait around because they like to stay in the action. I mean, a lot of guys like to stay in the action. I don't know how many times this guy plans on fighting, but the big fights are booked up. Now, what have we seen recently that is showing, you know, signs of that you should just wait and stick to where you're at right now in the rankings? Because although the rankings are just a number, to me, this is how the UFC and other organizations define who is next in that championship caliber contender you know what i mean like if you're in the top five you have a solid shot of getting the getting a shot at the belt so if i'm him i'm waiting i'm definitely waiting to see what happens with the algermain sterling and, and uh uh with the algermain sterling and the tj dillashaw fight i'm surprised that after he knocked out dominic cruz he did not immediately call for that he does say things like you know i'm professional i want to be the champion i want to be the first champion in ecuador and all that good stuff you need to name drop somebody man this is the fight business Dana White loves that shit. He loves hearing, I want the fight. Jared Cannonier did it after he knocked out Derek Brunson because everybody was talking about how Derek Brunson should be getting the next title shot, that that guy's going to be the next champion or he's going to have a good shot at getting a shot at the title if he wins this fight. And Cannonier took that momentum and took it on his side and rode it into the sunset. He got the, he got the title fight. He didn't get the victory, but he got what he asked for. Cheeto Vera should have opened his mouth. And he should have said, I want the winner of Aljo and TJ Dillashaw. I deserve it. I'm on a run. The guy has eight knockouts, eight submissions. He finishes every fight. 
I don't see why you wouldn't give this guy a title shot because he said that he's just going to see what happens. You know, he can't tell the UFC what to do. I mean, you kind of can. You have a whole country riding behind you. You're on a massive uprising as a contender. I would definitely take that momentum and ride it into a title fight. He's a nightmare matchup for guys like Aljamain Sterling and TJ Dillashaw. Now, the grappling department, we can see what happens there. But regardless, him standing up clearly has the power to drop anybody. People were talking about Dominic Cruz being the next contender, possibly getting the next title shot or very close to it. Now, he's definitely going to be moving down the rankings. That will not be happening. But Cheeto Vera, with such a phenomenal finish, should ask for a little bit more in my eyes. Because you got to look, man. There's a lot of big fighters in the top 10 in the 135 division. You got Peter Yan, number one. TJ Dillashaw, number two. Jose Aldo, number three. Corey Sanhagen, number four. Marlon Vera's, you know, he did beat number eight, Dominic Cruz. So it depends what happens in these next fights to see where he moves. So that's why I'm saying he should be patient. Number six, Marab. Number seven, Rob Font. Eight, Dominic Cruz. Nine, Pedro Munoz. And then you got 10, Song Yudong. 11, Ricky Simone. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. The contenders that are coming up are so good. Sean O'Malley's ranked 13, and he's been a finishing monster. So... You know, it's never been a better time to be in the 135 division, especially if you're in the top 15. But there, there's a lot of competition there for a potential title shot. Jose Aldo, if he beats Marab, I think that's the move that you would want to make for the next number one contender. Pewter Yan taking on Sean O'Malley, to me, I don't feel like he deserves a, a title shot. after if he, if he gets through Sean O'Malley, he, he doesn't deserve a title shot. And to be honest, the way the things I've seen playing out in the UFC as of right now... I wouldn't be surprised if Sean O'Malley gets a knockout in that fight and ends up moving way up the rankings. But I would wait if I'm Marlon Vera and if I'm the UFC. I would see what happens with the obviously the Aljo and TJ Dillashaw fight because you could move Vera up right into the title fight or you could give him the winner of Jose Aldo and Murad for the next number one contender. It really just depends. I have a feeling that is what's going to happen because Corey Sanhagen's taking on Song Yudong, who's number 10. So I feel like they're trying to move these guys who are been knocking people out and showing good potential in the bottom half of the top 20 they're trying to get them into the top 10 top five so i feel like if i'm marlon vera or cheeto vera excuse me i'm definitely asking for the title or for the number one contender fight to fight for the title and nothing else he should not be taking any other fights but like always guys let me know what you guys thought about the fights tonight it was a damn good fight card there was six decisions and seven finishes six of those were ko's so if you missed it, I mean, it's on ESPN Plus. You can go back and watch the fight night. You're going to have some fun. There was really good fights. The co-main event was a banger. But anyway, like my video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I drop more content. And like always, man, I'll see you guys on the next one. Hey, this talk shit. Yeah, they bread stank. Walk up in the club dripping like I'm fresh paint. I could see through the facade like an